We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. I'm back up on the roof checking the perimeter defenses. So if you remember, if you've been following us a while, we closed this part up here, and that appears to be secure. Um, looks like the squirrels might have been chewing on it, and that's okay. So there's no squirrel going in here. And this was the other hole we found. And that's also secure. This wood is really punky. It's gonna to have to be replaced. And down over here, that feels okay. Squirrels tend to like corners for some reason. So I'm just going along and feeling to see if there's any new holes. And there probably wouldn't be any here because it's not a corner. There's all kinds of nails. Oh, I found one. Right there, sure enough. All right, I think we'll have to get some hardware cloth and patch that. I'm also very interested in what's going on over here on the, the other side. Remember that huge hole that we found that was the size of a basketball? I can see it really clearly now. That squirrel just destroyed that corner. Now I know that the squirrel has been getting in there before, but I put a piece of hardware cloth in there and some screws to hold it down. And there's also squirrel repellent. So those two holes should be okay and we haven't heard any squirrel activity inside the kitchen, which is underneath this roof. I think we're okay in that realm. What we're hearing is squirrels running around inside the second floor. And the only way they can get there is from the attic. All right, it's time to take a trip up in the spooky attic. And remember, when we pass 10,000 subscribers, I'm gonna take the camera up there and give you a tour. I'll be right back. I found the problem. There was a big hole up there, and what I did several weeks back is I covered it up with hardware cloth and put a board over the top of it, and then I sprinkled squirrel repellent. And that kept it away for a long time. And I think it went for easier pickings, which was above our kitchen. And so as soon as we closed that up, it came back here. I guess they have a memory. It came back over here and eventually found a way to circumvent my defensive perimeter. So what we have to do is somehow plug that up. And I'm toying with a few different ideas here. I just spent the last hour up in the attic trying to close up the hole and I had a hard time getting back in there to work on it. So what I ended up doing is I cleaned out the entire squirrel nest. And then I took a couple pieces of hardware cloth and I rolled them up into a cone shape and kind of closed the backside. I shoved one inside this side and I shoved the other up in this side. And then I took a stick and just kind of jammed it in there as hard as I could just to make sure that it's completely closed up and there's no way the squirrel can get in. Then I took some squirrel repellent and just flung it in there, hopefully that'll get the job done until we can make a permanent repair. I was expecting to mount this on the wall outside today, but I walked outside a few minutes ago and it's raining. So I'm just gonna do some prep work. Let's unbox this. This is the meter box. And it's very important because that's where the power comes in from the utility. And that comes off like so. Now this, little thing here, it says leave in here until the power is connected, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it off so we can show you. This is a meter box, and the way it works is the meter plugs in right here in these four contacts, and these are heavy, heavy-duty contacts, and then these are clamps that hold the meter in place. 
These are set up so you can hook them up any number of ways. They have a top cover, so if you're bringing your cabling in from overhead, you would put a mast pipe here and go straight up, and then there would be a weather head on top of that, and the wires would come in that way, come down, and then drop into here. The utility always comes on the top. There's also a bunch of knockouts here where we can add conduits. And this whole thing mounts to the wall. So what I'm going to do is add a conduit that goes from here to here. We'll have underground electrical service which will come in from the bottom on the left hand side because that's what the utility asked for. It will come up here, come over the top, and hook into these lugs right here. On the other side, we'll have two more cables that come down here like this, pop through, go through the conduit, into the electrical box, and then hook up to the main breaker. Let's take a look inside the breaker panel. All right, it has all kinds of interesting stuff here. Bus bars, instructions, screws, stickers. So we're going to come in the side and we'll bring those cables up and we'll come all the way up to the top and then we're gonna come in the top and we're, we're gonna hook up here, here, and here. So I need to kind of get an idea of how much cabling we need. Leave myself a nice generous loop. And we'll come across here. That's going to be six feet of four aught triple conductor cable. Several days have passed since we were last able to film. We had bad weather and I've been really busy at work. And by the time I get home at night, it's pitch black outside, so there's not much I can do. But here it is, a beautiful day, and I've got plenty of time to work, so let's get back at it. Now, these two boxes here have to connect because the electrical wires that come from the meter have to go into the breaker panel, and that's done by knocking out some of the sheet metal here. Now, a lot of times you can get a misalignment between this knockout and this knockout, and the way we fix that is by using an offset. So by putting this offset in here, we can rotate this around to whatever degree we have to to make everything line up properly. Usually these are designed to work together as a system. So you'll have a knockout here, a knockout here, and then you have other knockouts here to actually attach the cabling to your electrical system. That is the loads, the, the rooms, the lights, the plugs. The first thing I want to do is take out the knockouts. So I have my offset and I'm laying it on here just to eyeball it, see which ones of these have to come out. They're made in steps, so you can take out any size you want depending on what kind of conduit you're putting into it. So it looks to me like I have to take out all of them except for the last one. So then I just take my screwdriver and I start literally knocking them out. These things are fairly sturdy and they don't knock out as easily as the residential units do. The metal tabs that hold it together, they get weaker and weaker until finally they snap and give way and the thing breaks off. And then I'll just work my way through the rings until I get to the one I want. Now I'm going to start working the rings to get them out. Okay, let's start tapping these ones out. Okay, that takes care of that. Now, see, that fits perfectly. So I can put that in there. I can put the other end on the meter box. 
and then everything will go together beautifully. The North American electrical system is what's known as a two-pole system. You have one phase, and then you have another phase, which is 180 degrees out of phase. So you mathematicians and scientists will know what I'm talking about there. Basically, we're going to hook one phase here, we're going to hook the other phase here, and each phase carries one half of the breakers, the other phase carries the other half of the breakers. There's also a neutral line, which is the return, which goes back to the transformer up on the pole. And that's how the energy comes through the panel, through the breaker, to the load, back to the panel, and through neutral, and then back to the transformer. We also have a ground, which we'll talk about later. This is what's known as a main lug panel, meaning that it has lugs, but no shutoff breaker. Now, we need to have a shutoff breaker, so we bought a breaker kit, and we're gonna go ahead and put that in right now. To convert this panel to a main breaker panel, we have to remove these two lugs right here and install the main breaker kit. So the first thing I was going to do is take these lugs off, All right, there are your main lugs. We no longer need those. What we need now is this. We also have to take this off. Okay, we'll put the breaker in here, like this. There it goes. Let's go ahead and cinch it down by putting the nuts back on where the lugs were. This was the old lug, which was here. I took that out. Now the breaker is in place, and your new lugs are here, which are part of the breaker. And now we'll tighten down the screw that holds down the center. That's it. Now we have a main breaker. This is a nice safety feature which comes with modern electrical panels. It's an insulator and this goes down over the lug and protects the electrician from electric shock. There's no way that you can touch that now. The breaker panel has three mounting points, one at the top and two at the bottom. So I need to find out how many inches it is approximately from the top mounting point to the bottom of the box. And that looks to be about 32 inches. And we want to leave just a little bit of space between the bottom of the box and the trim board on the house so we'll just say 34 inches is about right. So I have to go outside and put a screw into the siding at 34 inches. It's taken a long time to get to this point, so I am so excited because today we finally get to mount the electrical box. All the paint is dry, all three coats of it. Now, after much calculation, recalculation, and remeasurement, and remeasurement, because we want to get this right, we've decided that 11 inches from this edge here and 36 inches from this edge here is where the first mounting screw will go. So I'll go ahead and measure that now. It has a really neat oil base aroma to it. The wood in these old houses is extremely dry and extremely hard. And if you try to just jam a screw or a nail into it, you can actually split the wood. So what I'm gonna do is put a pilot hole in there just to relieve some of that tension.
The first screw will serve as a hanger for the breaker box. After thinking about this for a moment, I'm not very comfortable with the screw sticking way out here like this that the box is going to hang on. This is a, a long cantilevered screw and I'm not, not really comfortable with that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill another hole right above it. I'm moving the screw up just a little bit so that it lands on solid wood. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that out for now. Okay. Now the box is hung. <laughs> I guess we gotta balance it, huh? We do, yeah, we need to find a level. Okay. So let's go get one. I'll level. go get one. Okay, let's get this thing leveled up. Right about there. A screw and a washer with a rubber pad on it. Very nice. A breaker panel is no good unless it has energy from the utility. Well, there's no meter, so we've got to put one in. I have my offset. Put it in there and put the ring on it. It's just on there loosely. This is a brand new meter box. Pretty much the same as this old meter box except that it's new, and we're building our new system alongside the old system. And when we're all done, we'll do a big cutover, and then all this old stuff will come out. Now, the reason I used the offset was because I can rotate it to whatever angle I need so that this fits properly. And of course, we want it to be level. With everything leveled up, I'm gonna go ahead and sink in a pilot hole. Let's go ahead and drop a screw in there just to hold things in place. That's just pinned in place now. I'm gonna go ahead and drill the rest of the pilot holes and then we'll put all of the screws in. Well, things don't always work perfectly. There is no room to get the drill in here to do this last screw, so I made up a little tool, if you will. A ratchet, extension, and a adapter so I can take the screwdriver bit, stick it in there, and then I can just wrench it down by hand. There we go. Now, once the utility puts the meter in here and closes this box, they put a lock on here, and this box will probably never be open again for many, many years, decades even. Time to put the lock rings in.
These have special tabs on them, so you just take your screwdriver, and push it down until it's tight, and then just give it a couple of love taps. And the same thing over here. This is high voltage electrical cable. This is made for a 200 amp service entrance and it consists of three wires. We have four aught, four aught, and two aught. The four aught is bigger. These are used for both poles of the power and this is the neutral which goes back to the transformer. I'm going to take off both of the bottom lugs just to get them out of the way. I'm going to lay this in here and find out where I need to make that cut. So it'll be right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and score this. Here it is. This is aluminum wire and aluminum will corrode if you just leave it to the elements. So they make this special paste that you're supposed to put on here. And it's a conductive paste, but it gets in there and protects the wire. I like to make sure that it's in there real good. I'm gonna put one end through here. I'm going to bend this around. It's really, really stiff. <clears throat> You've got to have some muscles to do this kind of work. <laughs> Apparently I don't have enough. Okay, I think it's lined up good. Let me go ahead and put some more of that goop on there. This one here is actually the hardest one to do. So if we can get this one, the rest will be easy. Go ahead and pull it, pull it back a little bit. Okay, right there. Wow, this stuff is stiff. I think I need to rebend it actually. This is where plumbing and electricity come together. <laughs> Maybe that would be enough. Like I said, this is the worst of them all. Everything after this is easy. Pull it back towards you. A little more. Right there, right there. Oh, no. Your hand. Yeah, I cut my hand. Okay. Get it in a little it's further. Kind of in there. Yeah. Okay, now take your take your cable and rotate it towards the house. Okay. All right. That. Yes. Yes. Okay, let me get the clamp on there. All right, we've got blood, sweat, and tears involved in this thing now. Good grief. It's in now. Now I've got to pull it back just a little bit to get the insulation out of it. Okay, right there. That's okay. exactly what I need right there. Okay. Yep. This stuff is not for the faint of heart, you guys.
let's do the neutral wire next. The neutral wire is marked with a stripe. Okay, here comes the neutral. Yes. This one's going to be super easy compared to the other one. Just get it bent up, kind of. <clears throat> All right, stop. Right there, perfect. See? Now, now why did the other one have to be so difficult? We are ready for the last cable. So let's go ahead and put that through. Keep it, keep it up towards the house if you can. All right, keep going. I'm trying. A little more. More. Yep. More. A little more. Just a hair. Whoops. Right there. Right there. Okay. Okay. All right. Just put some, put some preload on that. <clears throat> All right. Now that goes in real nice. Let me have back about a quarter of an inch. Right there, that's good, good. We saved the best for last, you know that? <laughs> Too bad they couldn't all be like that. All right, so I'm torquing these down to 20.8 foot-pounds. There it is, right there. And we should just be about here too. That's it, 20.8 foot-pounds. This smaller wrench here is a inch-pound wrench, so it's more sensitive. And we used to use it for working on airplanes. But it's calling for 50 inch-pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Okay, here we go. Well, that says it's 50 right there. It doesn't take a whole lot. It's about time to close this box up, but I need to do this. Take a piece of red tape and wrap it around one of the conductors. It doesn't matter which one but one of them has to have red tape on it, like that. And then take another piece of red tape and identify which cable that is. That would be this one here. And I'm going to just, just kind of tag it temporarily so that I know which one is which. Yeah, this cardboard cover here says, Remove only when meter is installed. The inspector is going to want to see this in place. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back on. Grab the cover. Lock it in place. And that's done for now until the utility comes. Okay, now I want to try to dress these cables in here so that they look nice. So I'm going to push down on this one and then push this one up inside like so. I think I'm going to cut right here. 
I pre-cut this to length and then stripped it. So we'll put some more of that anti-corrosion paste on here, otherwise known as goop. <laughs> I got your glove. <laughs> okay. All right, I've got to get up over this tab. There we go. All right, consider it muscled. Yes. I'm not worried about this going anywhere, so I'll just leave it where it is. Next up, I'm going to take the neutral and I'm also going to run it up the same side and loop it down and drop right here. So I'm just putting a bit of a pre-bend in there so it runs up the side really nice. And then a nice loop. Don't worry, nothing broke. Okay, so that looks real good right there. So I think I'm going to put a cut right about here. I pre-cut the neutral wire and I went ahead and pasted it up. So let's go ahead and dress it in like it's supposed to be. And put it right down in there. There we go. Bad the meter box wasn't that easy. We have one more to go. This one. Alrighty, here it is, the last wire. If you're going to do electrical work, make sure you do a really nice job. Make sure your cables are dressed in well and running all the same direction. It should look like you ran a comb through it. The manufacturer specifies 250 inch-pounds of torque, so I'm going to see if this wrench will do it. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> This wrench is probably 30 years old, and I think I've pretty well worn it out. The, the ratchet mechanism is shot. So let's do this. Let's take 250 and divide it by 12 to get foot-pounds. 20.83. 20 20.83 foot-pounds. All right, 20.83 is our target, same as the other box. That's it. There it is, 20.8 foot-pounds. Don't forget the safety shields. Okay, I think that's it. Pop the other one on too. 
There we go. Two safety shields. But wait, what else are we forgetting? Something very important. The answer is ground. This is called a grounding bar and it comes as part of the breaker panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this right here. If you recall from a few episodes back, we drove two ground rods in the ground and then we tied them together with this heavy copper wire. So we need to bring this copper wire up here through a hole in the box, which I'm about to make, and then all the way up here to this lug, which is the ground lug. Take out the slug. Good. That's really more ground wire than we needed, but it was cheaper. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting this dressed out. So we'll come over here, up against the wall. So it looks like right here is about where we need to make the cut. We're racing daylight right now. The sun is going lower and lower and we're trying to finish this up and we keep having to recalibrate the camera every few minutes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the wire in here. And pull it up into that. We have another lug, but this one, this one is a screwdriver lug. So I'll just put that in like so. Crank it down. We can dress this up nicer later. Right now, I just wanted to get it there. Okay, now, what else are we missing? We're missing the other ground. There's another ground strip right here. So we need to bring a copper wire from here, come down, cross over, and come back up, and then make a connection. I pre-bent this. It looks awfully big, but it really does fit. So I'll put that in there like that. and then crank down on the screw. So I'm gonna come back later and torque that down. I'm gonna cut this off right here just so I can get rid of all the excess. And that way I won't be fighting with it. So all I'm doing is just nicking it with the cutters. I'm not cutting it, because these cutters will never cut through that. I'm just nicking it. And then I go ahead and start bending it back and forth a couple of times. That's all it takes. Okay, let's get this wire dressed in here really nice. Again, we want things to be nice and neat. All right, let's get the excess off of here. There we go. I'm 
I'm going to go ahead and put these two ground wires up the same lug. Like that. Okay, address that in there really nice. Okay, that takes care of the grounding. All I have to do now is come back and torque that. That's it. I could do more than that by hand. Okay, that's torqued. All that stuff is torqued. This is done. The grounding is done. Now we have to start putting in the breaker, which will feed that panel eventually. But we're running out of daylight, and I think it's a good time to clean up. So I'm gonna ask my sweet love to come over here and uh, let's close this video out and uh, get to editing. Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House. Yep, we'll see you next time.